ladies and gentlemen, Steve Martin. Thank you. Oh, you don't have to play. Don't have to. Good evening. Uh, first, I am pleased to announce that we have found that tonight has raised more money for the AFI than any other single event, had it not been for my fee. <laughs> so tonight, uh, we're here because uh, almost 30 years ago, we made a movie called The Jerk, and today, it is one of the greatest films of all time, <laughs> which I just didn't expect. Uh, the movie began, uh, I was a stand-up comedian at the time, and I knew pretty soon it was going to be over for me. And I thought, maybe I could get into movies. And so I started working on a, a screenplay. Um, it was kind of crazy and mixed up. I was driving over thinking some of the original gags that were in. Uh, one, one was... Uh, I was, you know, he was getting jobs, new jobs, and one of the jobs was being a buffalo counter in Beverly Hills. And I would stand on the street corner with a clicker and wait for buffalo. And then the end of the gag was I, fi there, I finally see one. And anyway, but that didn't make it in. This the screenplay incorporated some bits from my act, which one of them was the opening line, which is, I was born a poor black child. I thought it'd be fun to illustrate that. We got a great family uh, featuring Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee, two great blues players, which you'll hear at the beginning. And um, we, um, oh, other bits from the act, uh, there's one bit at, at the end where I'm uh, leaving the house and leave, I don't want to spoil it, you've probably seen it before, but I don't want to spoil it, but <clears throat> and I sort of saying, I don't need anything, I don't need you. All that stuff came, came from my act, but largely the screenplay was developed by Michael Elias and uh, Carl Gottlieb and myself, and we just kept working on it and working on it. Our goal was to have a laugh on every page. And because I was a novice screen player, I didn't know any rules. Uh, so it's, it's got a freewheeling feeling uh, about it that I, that I do like. And then Carl Reiner came into the mix and gave it heart and gave it shape, and we became very, very close friends. He was like a father to me, although I wouldn't let him bathe me like he wanted to. And I, <laughs> I and David Picker was such a great uh, spirited influence on the movie, and uh, unfortunately he's in Africa. And believe me, if I could be in Africa tonight, I would. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Um, we premiered the movie. We didn't premiere the movie, we actually premiered the trailer of the movie. In Westwood, we had Klieg lights and circling spotlights, and it was a seven minute, uh, you know, a three minute trailer. And we did all the sort of fancy uh, things you would do at a regular premiere, but it was for a three minute trailer, which we thought was funny. Now, um, <clears throat> you know, um, two things to look for in the movie. One is my favorite joke, which is very hard to hear, and that's why I'm going to tell you what it is. Uh, I, I used to, Carl Reiner and I would drive to work every morning. He would pick me up. We had Hondas. Who knew? And uh, <laughs> he'd pick me up and we'd drive to work and I'd say, I, I said, I had this idea uh, for a gag last night. And I told him the gag and he started laughing and then I started laughing and we laughed the whole way to work. <laughs> and, and I always thought it was so funny, but it kind of gets buried and it's a simple little joke. As you might know, my character's name is Navin Johnson. And there's a scene where I'm hitchhiking, and we're hitchhiking around Missouri. I'm leaving the town, going toward the big city, and a car pulls over, I think a truck pulls over, and says, uh, St. Louis? And I say, uh, no, Navin Johnson. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the other thing to look for uh, is there's a scene between Bernadette Peters and myself where we sing a very simple, lovely little tune called Tonight You Belong to Me, which was a hit in the 50s. It was sung by two uh, children, really. They were about 12. They were sisters, and uh, their father put them up to it. And we sing this song, and I always thought this was the most beautiful moment in the film. 
and I was so proud of it. I said, because it would be funny, but it's going to be really touching, too. It's going to be fantastic. And we premiered the movie in St. Louis. We went to St. Louis to premiere, and it was full of people, and, and I'm watching, and they're laughing, and it's going great. And then the song comes up, and I go, oh, wait for this. The song starts, and then I see the people streaming out for popcorn. You know, I go, oh, okay. And then they came back in after the song. But anyway, they wanted the jokes. But one thing to look for in that scene is I'm playing this beautiful Martin ukulele, and I learned it for the, for the s scene. I learned, actually learned how to play it. I can't remember if I'm playing it live or not, but I'm playing it, and then I get all excited, and I put the ukulele down. And if you listen, when I stand up all excited, you'll hear a crunch. <laughs> and that's me stepping on the ukulele. It's just a little snap, <laughs> but it was a beautiful instrument, but it didn't get ruined. Um, I hope you do enjoy it. It's been a long time, but the movie somehow survives. I don't know why, and I think the, the reason it's, it's lasted is because it's so innocent, uh, because it's uh, very cheerful, uh, because the lead character is pretty stupid, <laughs> and you kind of get on his side pretty fast. So um, I hope you enjoy it, and here it is, The Jerk. <laughs>